Namaste. Namaste and welcome. Let us begin by turning inward. great spirit, saints and sages of all times, of all places, O ye pathmakers of all, Om Shri Babaji Anamaha, Om Shri Lahiri Mahasaya Ji Anamaha, Om Shri Teshwar Ji Anamaha, Om Shri Pramahansa Yogananda Ji Anamaha, Om Shri Shari Ji Anamaha, Om Shri Goswami Kriyananda Ji Anamaha. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Most beloved, Ishta Devata. Namaste. All ye beings of the air, the earth, the fire, the water, the ether, we call upon thee to be with us today. Most beloved Lord of life, in all of thy names and all of thy forms, in the past, the present, and the future, we call upon thee to sweep clear our paths to be with us, that we might lift and ascend. And we call upon all of thee to help us to see the reality to see the Satcha. Om Shri Satcha Yanamaha. Om Shri Satcha Yanamaha. Om Shri Satcha Yanamaha. Om Shri Satcha Yanamaha. Om Shri Satchaya Namaha 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 Om Shri Satchaya Yanamaha. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste. Once upon a time, in the ever present now, there was a young prince. And his whole life, he had been trained by his grandmama, his grandpapa, and his guru. And he had been trained to develop the skills that he needed to lead the people to see Satcha, the reality. But in order for him to do this, he had to first be able to see the reality himself. Sound familiar? One day, they call up all the counselors to the court just a big room, big room in the court. 
And the prince really had spent most of his time in a little ashram. He really wasn't used to all the pomp that went with all this the grandeur. But this is the day that they were going to really show him the nature of the human mind. Big day. And so they go in and grandmama, grandpapa first, mother and father second, with the prince in between them. And the guru came in closing last. So they come to the court and the guru says, all right, we're going to show you the reality where we've picked 12 people 12 people from around the kingdom. They're all going to come and they're all going to show you the reality. Listen carefully to what they say. Listen carefully. Listen carefully to what they say. No comments, no judgments, just listen. They all line up in a circle. And first comes this very red-haired, assertive young woman. And she says, the reality is I am. Voila, ici, I am. C'est moi, c'est moi. I am the reality. Now, everybody kind of looks and, okay, he says anything. She goes back and very proud. Second person comes up, very beautiful, beautiful formed, beautiful formed. Everything's just lovely. But she's surrounded by all these people carrying all these things. And she says, Your Majesty, I am what I have. And I have brought to you the very best of what I have. I have brought to you my sculptures. I brought to you my art. I've brought to you all the wonder that I have accumulated in my life. And here you can see it. And we will leave the very best of this for you. For what is important is what you have. The prince nods his head and doesn't say anything and kind of looks out at all these things that she has. The next person comes up. Books, 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 videotapes, uh, no videotapes, sorry, 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 sorry. Devices, nice devices that will get you any, communicate any place else in the world. And the person is chattering, 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 chattering. Your Highness, it's really how much you know. It's really how much I can tell you. And all I can do is communicate, communicate, communicate. And then you will find the reality. Because the reality is the communication. Maybe we should look at this. Maybe we should look at that. Maybe we should look at this. No, I think we should go here. No, I think we should do this. All the options in the world should be available to you. A lot of air, a lot of air. Prince says, okay, okay. Now you know by now, I think. The Princess Aries had come out, and the Princess Taurus had come out, and the Prince Gemini had come out. And now we have Mama, beautiful, round, long haired, rosy cheeks, milk and cheek. nurturing woman. Now, oh. what is important is what I feel. 
how I nurture you, that's what's important. That's what's important. Nothing is more important. It doesn't matter if I talk to you. It doesn't matter if I have it for a long period of time. It doesn't matter if it's possessions. It's how I nurture. It's how I feel. Then comes out a very, 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 very handsome golden haired locks, very, very majestic being. Your Majesty, the only thing that matters is what I will. You know a little bit about that. And what I will is what will manifest in the world. What I will is what is important. With that, he turns and goes back to his place. And then you see a little thin, thin person coming up with, he's got his pencils behind his ears and he's got his calculators there. Notebooks, devices. Well, Your Majesty, I think that the really important thing is that we break this into pieces and we analyze it. If we can analyze it, then we are gonna know exactly what it is the reality is. So we need to take it into pieces and break it apart. And if we take it into pieces and break it apart, then we're gonna know what the reality is. And we have to break it down to its very smallest component. And yes, it might change, but we have to break it down to its smallest component. Oof. And I'll get it right, I'll get it right, I'll get it right. By this time, the prince is feeling a little confused. He looks at mama, looks at papa, looks at grandmama, grandpapa, you know, and, and he shakes his head and, and he looks at guru, guruji, you know, and the guru just says, just wait, be patient, be patient. We're almost there. Next comes a tall, regal person holding in his palms, in the palms of his hand, not doing it so well there, the scales. And around his neck, he holds the scales of justice and they are perfectly balanced. And he says, the only thing that matters is that you live your life always in perfect balance. It's all that matters. None of the rest of this matters. What you do, what you think, what you feel, it matters not. Everything must be balanced. The prince nods and they go on. And then comes a very beautiful soul with a piercing, piercing, piercing brown eyes, twinkle in his eye, dark hair, curly hair, heavy beard. Well, Your Majesty, the only thing that matters is what I desire. And what I really desire is secret. I will tell no one, not even you. You must find what you desire, and that will be your reality. That will be your reality, he says. The next person that comes out is bubbling with enthusiasm. They're so happy, just happy, jovial, kind of round, just very, very happy. Well, Your Majesty, whatever you aspire to be is what the reality will be for you. Whatever you aspire, you can be. And that is the reality, Your Majesty. Whew, that's great. Then the tall, tall, thin, thin, long face. Very serious. Dark, 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 dark blue clothing. Very proper. Well, Your Majesty, Guruji, 
the majesty. He's the only one who bows to everyone. The only thing that matters is whether you can utilize any of this. If you see something you think is part of the reality and it is not useful, it is not part of the reality. It's very simple. It's not useful. It's not part of the reality. With that, he bows and goes off. Oh no, the prince is kind of shaking his head and he's confused. And next comes the man in the neon bright plaid outfit dressed like he came from outer space. I think he did. And he says, well, the only thing that matters is how you intellectualize it. If I can intellectualize it, if I understand it intellectually, that is all that matters. Does it matter if you have it and it's gone? Does it matter if you feel anything about it? Does it matter if you desire it or possess it? It matters only if you could describe it intellectually in the way that one of my professor colleagues can understand. And with that, he's off. And the last person comes in, stands in the circle, and oh, she's beautifully dressed with flowing gowns, the color of the sea, long, beautiful hair. And she says, well, your majesty, none of this matters. It just matters what you feel, what your intuition tells you. You have to do what the intuition says. Forget all the other stuff. Now, the key is you have to know whether it's intuition or not, right? But you'll figure it out. And she stands in the circle. You can imagine the prince was confused, utterly, totally confused. These were people from around his kingdom, and he had asked to see, he was supposed to be coming to see the reality, Satcha, Satcha. He was supposed to see Satcha, the truth, the nature of life. And what he got was something else. What did he receive? Ah, he received what you and I have. What you and I have that has taken up residence in our consciousness. Well, he received the view that every soul had based upon where the planets on the planet Earth were, the planets around the planet Earth were, at the time that they were born. And he received the view of all those people who had their sons in Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. All of these filters, not just where the sun was, but where the moon was. So you have a combination of these things. Not just where the sun and the moon were, but where the ascendant was. The true filter, the true filter over the reality of their consciousness. Now you and I have a problem, a petite, petite problem. It is the problem of life on the earth. It is the problem of living harmoniously upon the earth. And that is that we must be able to see beyond the filters of the mind, beyond the filters of the uh, coloration that we have been born with. I know, I put this up and all I can see is blue. But if I put it up 
all you can see is an outline of my face behind the blue. You can't really see this form, but you can see it filtered with blue. In exactly the same way, there is no reality that you perceive when you are in this chitta, this bind stuff. It is all filtered. All reality is filtered by these states of consciousness that you have been born with. And it becomes even more complex as you walk through time. Because as you walk through time, then the sun and the moon, they progress and the ascendant progresses. It means it walks to a different state of consciousness. So you have that state of consciousness that you were born with, and then immediately you're adding other filters on, other filters, other filters, other filters. And so it's as if you look at the light, you look at the reality, you look at the world, and it's all filtered. It's no wonder. It's such a hard place to find harmony, such a hard place to find ease. And so what is to be done? What is to be done? I would say to you, the first is begins with reflection or tarka, deep, deep tarka. What are your biases? What are your prejudices? Which of those states of consciousness I am, I have, I feel, I will, I um, analyze, I balance, I desire, I aspire, I utilize, I intellectualize, I intuit. Which of those has the strongest presence in your consciousness? Now, I'm very, very uh, open about the fact that I have uh, a lot of planets high in my horoscope in Capricorn, which means that I have a uh, very uh, strong filter that whatever I do, whatever I study, whatever I practice, whatever sadhana it is, that there has to be some benefit, that it has to be utilized. And so I don't want to know a fact just to know a fact. There has to be some reason for it. I was studying about redheads the other day because there's a little girl that is in my life who's a redhead and she's going through a phase where she's not happy about her red hair. So do you know only one to two percent of the people in the world have red hair? That means you're special if you have red hair naturally occurring. But I would not, I don't have the kind of personality that would want that fact for something else, or just, just to have the fact that's not my personality. It's not the filters of my life. But some of you have those filters. Some of you have the filters where that's all that matters to you is gathering the data. None of the filters, none of the filters are better than any other. None of them is more valuable than any other. They're all valuable. All the filters are valuable. They all have a place in your life. And you have come into the life with those filters because there's something that you are looking for something that you are looking to gain, something that you are trying to learn, some lesson that you are trying to learn. But mystically speaking, yogically speaking, the key is to remove the confinement of those filters. Well, you've seen this, you've seen this great image. I can block out the sun with my thumb. All I have to do is put it over my eye. 
you block out life, you block out the reality with your thumb, you block out the reality with the limitation of your horizon of awareness, with the limitation and the filters that you place on your horizon of awareness. One of the newly ordained swamis who I have a great, great respect for was talking about having been a soldier in a desert storm. And uh, he was in the Middle East. And he said that he was very young when he went there. He was in his late teens. And uh, he said it, it was really very hard, as you would imagine. And he came back with a strong, visceral dislike of the ethnic groups and the, the religious groups that he was opposed to during that war. They were on the other side. And he said, you know, in time, he began to study and he began to practice meditation and he this yoga and obviously he came to the priesthood but long before he entered the seminary he was meditating one day and he had what he said was an aha aha and he said all of a sudden he had seen an image of a person from that country that he had been in oh that's me that's me if I had been born there, I would be thinking the same thing. If I had been born there, I would have their view, not my view. And all of the opposition, the anger, the hatred in his soul. Now he did other rituals to go with that, but it was a massive aha and it changed his life because he came to realize ah, there cannot be, you know, if someone is opposed to me, you know, if this is opposing this, they must be brought together in balance. They must be brought together in balance, not here, not here, but here in balance. So what do you do? <laughs> And again, I keep saying, you begin with reflection. And, and what does that mean? It means that you need to uh, not noodle over it, not, uh, you're not trying to make it stronger. You're just trying to say, okay, where am I? You know, what direction am I facing? And where would I like to go from here? Huh? You know, where would I like to go from here? What would I like to see? Well, how about if I try to see the opposite of me, of where I am? And so if you see that, ah, I've got a lot of consciousness associated with utilizing something, well, maybe I should stop doing that. Maybe I should look at what I can feel and see how that experience is. Do it internally, do it through meditation, do it through visualization, do it through study. Oh, maybe I should stop analyzing and try to build my skill of intuition. Perhaps. And you go around each place that you would find these 12 states of consciousness and you go to the opposite you just write it out in a circle and go to the opposite what is the opposite and then you begin to view the opposite with openness and love and you have a sense of curiosity you must have a sense of curiosity uh, some of the greatest sadhana and really the most effective sadhana occurs when you look at others and try to understand their view. And you look at others by exploring their culture. You explore their books. 
what are they writing? You know, if you don't know others' languages, then you get their books in translation. It's not quite as good, but it, it will work. It's effective. Then get books in translation from other countries, someplace you've never been before. Eat the food of other countries. Eat the food of other cultures. I'll tell you, you know, my guru used to talk about this constantly. And I see how it is just, this is a practice that is not well utilized. People will say, well, I never ate that kind of food before. I'm never going to eat that kind of food. No, 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 no. It's exactly what you should do. Take a little bit, taste a little bit. You will see that your awareness opens up. Watch the films. Watch and observe the films from other countries. You will be absolutely transformed and amazed. And as your life allows you to do so, as life allows you to do so, travel. Travel to other countries. And, you know, we're in a wonderful time right now. You can go online. And most of you, you're here. You have a chance. You're already accessing the Internet. You can find enormously wonderful things about other countries. You can go visit other countries virtually if you cannot yet get there or right now you can't get there. But you go and see and watch and listen and experience. I don't think anything quite changes your consciousness as much as going someplace. But this helps. It helps tremendously. The first time that I was in Asia, the first time that I was in Thailand, actually, um, we were driving, I should back up. It, when I was young, I lived in Chicago. And in Chicago, in those days, on the corners, they had newspaper stands and the newspaper stands were uh, built out of like a corrugated aluminum and they were just big enough to be on the corner and a person could stay there and stay fairly fairly comfortable and yeah you know, they had a heater sometimes sometimes not but the newspapers would be in their magazines and stuff fast forward a few years later and I was landed in the airport in Bangkok and it was the middle of the night and we were driving down a rather expressway it was a big expressway it really surprised me but along the side of the road all along the road as far as I could see off to the left were these corrugated aluminum shacks you know, row after row after row after row. No electricity, no light on, but the shacks. And to my everlasting embarrassment, I said to the cab driver, are those shops? Are those, you know, is that, are, are they selling newspapers there? What, 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 what is going on there? And he says, oh, no, ma'am. Those are people's homes. Those are people's homes. Not too many days after that, we were down on the Gulf of Siam and walking along the water and came along a little street lined with those shacks, if you will, and they were open. And those were people's homes. Now, that changes your consciousness. That is a direct primary experience that changed my consciousness. It was a result of having the ability to go someplace other than where I 
am. And so if you want to see the reality, you need to have a sense of curiosity. You need to be able to go to the other side of the world in which you live. And that's what I'm saying to you mystically. I'm saying, go to the other side of the world. Go to the opposite place of where you are. And it, it does not mean that you need to uh, pick up and travel to the other side of the world. It doesn't mean that, um, that you cannot do all of this while you are staying in your own physical location, if that's necessary for you right now. But it means that you must have interest, curiosity about that which is other than you. And you must, if you want to see the reality, you must be able to say, well, okay, I see. The reality is really filtered for me. I see. So I've said to you, and these are, they sound like they're mundane but they are Kriya practices. They are Kriya techniques and Kriya techniques that came to me through my guru. He not only taught them, but he lived them. And so it begins, study other cultures. Study their food, I've already said that. Study their movies, I've already said that. Study their books, I've already said that. Travel to see them, I've already said that. And if you're fortunate enough to live in a large city like, or near a large city like Chicago, my goodness, you know, you can go all over the world. You've got restaurants, you've got communities where people still speak a language other than this English that we speak here. Go to those places, become curious about them. One of my disciples, he used to have this wonderful sadhana that I, I just think it's the most remarkable thing. And she and her friend used to take excursions around the city that they lived. And on the day that they take the excursion, they would intentionally be going someplace else. So they might be going to China or they might be going to Korea or they might be going to Mexico or, or some other place to Japan. And they'd pick names that they were going to use during that day and they'd use the names and they go have an adventure. Now, you know, that is a really fun sadhana. They'd have an adventure. They'd go to this other country. And, you know, that disciple also traveled a lot. So, uh, and so did her friend. So they could do that with comfort and ease. You must be willing to, to see beyond yourself, to see the reality, to see that such a... And why would you want to? Because if you don't, you're stuck in the same karmic loop going around and around and around and around and around. Same thing over and over and over and over. One of the lovely students who lives in Switzerland said to me not long ago, I'm not sure, you know, if it's such a good thing living here. I'm not sure if it's such a good thing being Swiss. I kind of looked at her. I said, really? She says, well, we do have mountains. Yeah, that's good. We've got great chocolate. Yeah, that's good. We've got good cheese. Yeah, that's good. I clean water. Yeah, that's good. Why do you think you don't want to be living in this beautiful country that people come from all over? You know, why would you say that's not good? Very wise, very wise soul. Well, you know, I'm locked into a Swiss state of consciousness. Not everybody has mountains. Not everybody has clean water. I'm locked into a Swiss state of consciousness. I said, yeah, but enjoy it while you have it, right? Enjoy the life there. 
find meaning in it, find joy in it, and appreciate all those the beautiful manifestations of life while you have them. Now I'm giving you some deep mystical secrets. You may think, no, 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 no. But I have. I've said to you that you need to see the filters that you came into the world with and the filters that have been placed over those as you have traveled through time. And they really do manifest, if you look at the sacred science of astrology, they manifest as the progressions. And so it just as you walk through time, the planets in their orientation to your consciousness at the time that you were born, they walk through time. And a filter is put on. So you're born with your sun in Capricorn, and that sun then progresses to Pisces. A very different feeling state. And very different about how people perceive you. And this is one of the great secrets, one of the great, great mystical secrets. The harmony and ease in life is not only how you look at life, which is what we all think. C'est moi, I'm here. It's how I look at things, right, that matters. No, 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 no. No. Truly. It's how others experience you. How do they experience you? You will find greater harmony, greater ease, greater joy in your life if you are able to recognize how they perceive you and soften your personality, soften your speech, soften your thoughts, soften your aggressiveness. And I know most of you here will say to me, I'm not aggressive. What is she talking about? Be ever more kind, more compassionate, more loving than you are now. And ascend upward. And thus you will see the reality ascend to the Om. Satcha, Satcha. The reality is the Om. Om and Satcha contain all manifest and unmanifest reality. Thou art that. Thou art not just the filters you have placed over your consciousness. Food affects your filters. Water affects your filters. Breathing affects your filters. The air that you breathe affects your filters. The emotions that you feed yourself affect your filters. The people you surround yourself with affect your filters. Be careful of who you surround yourself with. Exercise care. Surround yourself with people who are uplifting to you, people who are positive, people who are good, people who you wish to be like that. Because we become like that, that we surround ourselves with. And so we're going to turn inward now and ascend upward and ascend up to that which we wish to be to let go of the filters for just a moment to let go of the filters of the emotionality of the mind and all of these filters are really made stronger or a little weaker, depending upon how much we meditate, what you do to create a meditative lifestyle, 
how peaceful you are, how much you are doing every single day to be calmer and more peaceful. That's very, very important. And so let us turn inward and upward and meditate together for the time that we have remaining. Shanti. Sit if you're able with your spine erect. Turn your head to the left with a double exhalation. Bring your head back to the center. Begin to watch your breath. Use the sipping breath. Draw the energy from the limbs of the body to the trunk of the body. Again, with the sipping breath, draw the energy from the trunk of the body to the spinal column. From the base of the spine, draw the energy up to the sun center. A second time, draw the energy from the base of the spine up to the sun center. A third time, draw the energy from the base of the spine up to the sun center. Move that energy out in front of you as a golden ball of light. Expanding that light, sweeping to the left, sweep around your entire body, coming back to the center, encasing your body in a golden light. And do this three times. Expanding that golden light. Ascend as high as you are able. Ascending above the building. Of the city you are in. Of the continent. Of the planet. Ascend as high as you are able into the high places.
as you reach the high place, find your place of meditation. Now turn around in consciousness and focus your attention at the sun center from the high place. Focus the attention at the sun center. And drawing in the mind's eye the ah of the om. Ah. And then the ooh as the half circle off of the ah. And the crescent shaped moon of the um. Small bindu is the um. Draw the om at your sun center. Holding that ohm as a golden ball of light in front of you. See the ohm right at the sun center in the golden light. Holding the ohm, softly whisper his prayer. Free me. Free me from my confining thoughts. Free me from my confining thoughts that I do not pass them on to others. Free me, free them. Holding that ohm at the sun center. Free me from my confining thoughts that I do not pass them on to others. Free me, free them. See the ohm at the sun center. Turn up the rheostat of light on the ohm. Free me from my negative thoughts, my confining thoughts. I do not pass them on to others. Free me. Free them. Free them from their confining thoughts. They do not pass them on to me. Free them. Free me. Holding the ohm. Write the ohm again with your golden pen of light, bringing that ohm brighter and brighter at your sun center, the ah, the ooh, the mm, mm. Free them from their confining thoughts that they do not pass them on to me. Free them. Free me. Again, the ohm. Free them from their confining thoughts that they do not pass them on to me. Free them. Free me. Turn up the light on the ohm so that it is brilliant at your sun center. See the ohm radiating, feel it radiating the light. Draw it closer to your sun center.
chant three times the Om. Now, with this sipping breath, very gently, draw the ohm to your sun center. Let the ohm merge with your sun center. And feel the ohm standing at the top of your spinal column, standing at the sesamonic channel. Sip in three times using a sipping breath. Short press. Again, chanting the Om three times. Feel and see the light of the Om increasing in brightness. Om. Now feel the Om dissolving, the golden light of the Om dissolving down your spinal column. Feel, and as the Om dissolves, become aware each drop contains the Om. Each drop of the Om, the light, contains the whole pours down your sesamonic channel, pours down your spinal column, radiating out to the trunk of the body, the limbs of the body, radiating to every cell of your being. Hold your attention at the Om. Hold your attention at the Om at your sun center. Although the Om is now in every cell of your being, it remains always at the sun. It remains shining and brilliant at the sun center. The golden light of the Om. in the circle of thy self-awareness. Let all else go. Return again and again and again to the Om. 
closing your eyes and focusing at the sun center. Become aware of the OM. Using your pencil or your pen, write the OM. Write the OM in golden light upon thy sun center. Chant the OM. Breathe the OM. O oh, ye powers that be, pour forth thy blessings upon us. Dissolve away the difficult karmas of the past, difficult karmas of the present, difficult karmas of the future. May we be filled with the own. And in that filling, may we see clearly the reality. Om Tat Sat Om. Om Thou Art That. holding the OM at the sun center. Return your attention to the high place, knowing that you could return here again and again and again. Each time you chant the OM, each time you turn inward, turn your eyes to the sun center. Close the eyes and turn them to the sun center. Focus upon the own. Allow that reality to become thy reality, that thou might see who and what thou art. Be thou blessed. Be thou blessed. Be thou triply blessed. And as thou art blessed, share thy blessings with all who enter thy aura. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Devi. Now, as you are ready, return to the room you are in, the meditation place you are in. Om Shanti. Namaste. Thank you for the blessings of your presence. Thank you for sharing this time together, for your meditative energy, for your efforts, for your meditation.